ultimate in sci-fi epic entertainment, slow motion farming. Howdy all, I'm Adam, the Renaissance Nerd, and welcome to my review of Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. I am contractually obligated to do this because I did Part 1. I'm going to spend as little time possible with this retarded movie because this movie is as stupid, possibly even more stupid than the first one because they do a lot of cheap tricks to try and convince you there's depth to this movie when in fact this movie is shallow it's hollow. It has no true meaning to it other than making men cry and look, making women look badass and then creating false relationships, all done with really bad writing and really bad acting. This movie is terrible from top to bottom. There is no... Okay, there's one moment where I'll give them, okay, you did this, but it's still not good at all we're gonna dive right in i'm not gonna do any fancy clip tricks today we're gonna go right through this like a hot fake saber through an asian woman's arm you'll get it you'll understand we get there <laughs> i was laughing inappropriately throughout this whole movie it's just a moment later on where somebody's dying and we're supposed to be all sad about that. But somebody said a really stupid line and I'm just sitting here laughing my ass off because it's so stupid. <laughs> and it's, predictability is another problem with this movie. You can predict every little thing that's going to happen in this. Let's not beat around the bush. Let's get started. Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, picks up exactly where we left off with part one. It's almost as if they filmed an entire movie and just arbitrarily went like this down the middle. Whoop! Let's stop right here and make it two parts. Ugh. Oh, we get, um, what's his name? Uh, Francis from Deadpool is being revived. He's been in chrysalis, they call it, for a few days now. A couple of days, I guess. I don't know. Because remember, at the end of the last movie, he got revived by fake Regent, by Regent, who is adopted father to Korra, who we still only get a little bit of in this movie, and he's just as bad as everybody else. He gets revived. He wants to go to the plant, farming planet now and get Korra because she's whatever the hell her imperial mother world name is. I don't give a shit. They got to get her because she's the ultimate prize that will grant him all kinds of power because the Regent will then bestow upon him all the gifts of the world. Whatever. So they're going to go there, and it's just stupid. It's dumb. We are now on the home mother. No, I'm sorry. We're on the planet. We're on, we're on farm planet. We're on Rebel Moon. We're on the Rebel Moon, guys. We are on the Rebel Moon. We actually stay on the Rebel Moon for the whole movie. Cora and her band of misfit retards arrive at the village thinking they've won the day, talking about, oh, we're going to be so happy here. It's going to be fun and great. Until a cadet soldier, maybe, or a private soldier who betrayed his crew, his crew in the beginning of the first movie, all because he had a hard-on for the girl. He is pretending to give update reports, and he pretends to tell them that everything's fine, but that tells him that they're coming in five days. That's right. Five days. Remember, the Dreadnought with Admiral Francis from Deadpool is going to arrive in five days. He gets to tell everybody as they get greeted that, guess what, guys? No, sorry, you don't get to be happy. Everything's going to go to shit. We need to get ready. Well, that means Titus. Remember Titus, who was just a gladiator in an arena? Don't worry, you're going to get his backstory in a minute. Don't worry. It's, it's glorious. Gloriously bad. He has a great plan. His plan is for us to harvest... A, a, a whole cycle's worth of grain in two days. Two days. As if suddenly because they're there and everybody's motivated and if they work around the clock, they can harvest a year's worth of grain in, th in three days and then pile it around the buildings to protect the buildings from a planetary bombardment. Now, that's not a bad plan, but I just question the idea of how long do you think you actually have to do this? Before we get to that, though, we're going to get the remainder of Cora's backstory. First of all, her and Simp from the first movie, who managed to find his balls at the last minute and save everybody, he's going to simp for her harder, and that's going to generate her love for him. Because that's what Zack Snyder thinks a romance is. 
a simp simps for a woman and then she falls in love with him and we're supposed to care about this relationship because we don't it's it's boring it's pointless i hate both these characters they have the smacks after they have the smacks cora is going to reveal how she took place in the assassination of the king the queen and the princess who is the key to everything we're going to get a nice another little flashback because the flashbacks tell us everything we need to know here's the thing the flashbacks of this movie are just a poor excuse to cover bad exposition. I'll get into it further. Long story short, here we get Carrie Elwes on screen again. Wasted Carrie Elwes. Wasted, completely wastes a great actor. He has a couple of lines. They basically do the assassination of Caesar in the Senate. That's what they do. And then and then uh, Regent... Uh, uh, I forget his name. Honestly, I forget his name. Let's say Regent, too much man beard, says to Cora, kill the princess. You have to kill the princess. Do it now! He says it in a really awkward way with his Scottish accent. I guess it's a Scottish accent. I don't know. I'm not that great at that kind of stuff. Right. So she eventually, after pointing the gun at the princess, I'm sorry, and the princess says, I forgive you. So she ganks the princess, and we get a nice, brilliant, her key to everything healing light, which is makes it so goddamn obvious she's not dead. She's obviously not dead if her ultimate life-giving healing power reacted to her getting shot. It's so plainly obvious. She falls down, and then in a storytelling turn that makes zero sense, if you take everything in the first movie where, where, where too much, too much man beard Scottish man wanted Cora to be his ultimate weapon and be his lineage, he, do you, are you telling me now that he did everything he did with her so that she could be the fall girl for the assassination of the king, the queen, and the princess? Because that's what happens. As soon as she shoots the princess, then he calls her traitor murderer. Murderer! assassin and all the senators who just ganked the king and the queen are yelling at her ass assassin traitor murderer this, this makes no sense she was his pride and joy and because the king now didn't want to be a warmonger anymore he wanted to kill him and he decides to make her the the fall girl i i don't get this this is bad character work the motivation's just don't make any sense. Moving on, though. Korra fights her way free, steals a steals a, 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 a drop ship, is what they call it. Steals a drop ship, and eventually crash lands on the Rebel Moon, where they found her, and she stayed for a couple of seasons, and everybody's like, oh, we love you, Korra. Now they're going to have their little moment of, I love you, I love you in bed, and we're going to keep fighting. But now, now it's time for the most incredible, action-packed, sitting on the edge of your seat science fiction scene ever that's right it's time for slow motion farming Zack snyder needs to take slow motion and fuck both his ears with it go away we don't need an entire movie of slow motion this is retarded it's beyond retarded if there's a word that's worse than retarded put it in here because that's what this is it's a name it's ridiculous. It's bad filmmaking. Not everything needs to be slow motion to get his point of cause, especially farming. Farming slow motion. So we go through a montage of farming slow motion to show them all working together and bonding and this and that. And you get these little false story tidbits. At one point, Asian chick with the swords is taking a break. And there's this little boy who's become infatuated her simply through a little bad show don't tell of him looking at her at times and he goes over to try and tease her with a with, with a bit of wheat and she plays with him away and he goes away and he keeps looking back at her that's the let me say now that's the extent of their relationship their whole relationship is built on him looking at him playing with with a piece of wheat that's it and that's gonna be so significant that later on he's gonna cry when she dies. Yes, I spoiled it already. She dies. Anyway, we're going to take for a, take a break from slow motion farming and go back to the Dreadnought where Admiral Francis from Deadpool is awake and losing his mind and decides we're going to go full bore on everything. We're going to 
be horrible to these people. That's basically it. It's to show that he's out of control. And then we go back and guess what? We get more slow motion farming. That's right. I'm so having a good time here. We basically had between 15 and 20 minutes. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be fair, 10 to 20 minutes of slow motion farming to show everybody bonding over working the fields. Then it's party time. That's right. We have spent probably two to three days in slow motion farming. And now with two days remaining, let's just have a party night. That's right. These people haven't been trained to fight at all. No training. None. But it's time to have a party, sing and dance, have these weird little uh, towels handed out that represents the people who've come to help them. So this is why we care about you. You're so brave for this reason that it's retarded, stupid. And then black dude, whose name I can't remember, was actually a good actor, decides to sing for us in an alien language. <laughs> and during that, Anthony Hopkins' robot hears it and decides to lay down and listen to the music. That's right. You forgot about Anthony Hopkins' robot. He has all of four lines in this movie, and he shows up at predictable moments. Now we get a training montage. That's right. We're going to cover their training with a training montage where a couple times they say these women, I say women, <laughs> are naturals they're naturals at this and they show them setting up all their defenses for the battle to come digging trenches and tunnels and planting bombs and using the gear left behind by the mother world forces it's it's really dumb it's bad it's stupid but it's also that we can see how hard they're gonna fight here is perhaps now one of the most egregious sections of this movie I'm not going to go through every little bit of it because I want to get out of here as quickly as you do. We now get the backstories. If I remember in the last movie we complained, we just have these characters here and now. They're just all picked up. No real stories. A little couple words here and there. And everybody who sucks Zack Snyder's dick said, in the next movie, you're going to get all their backstories and you're going to eat crow because it's going to be incredible and their development's going to be peak. Let Zack cook. Well, Zach cooked a turd. He, in fact, he singed the turd into an even burnter turd. Right. Here are their backstories. Titus. It, and, and as I said a little bit ago, what happens is this is bad exposition covered over by flashback montaging. That's what this is. Really bad exposition. Just dumping this information and hoping that you accept it because you're getting some visuals that have these characters in them. So, first we get Titus. Titus basically be uh, betrayed the Empire because he wouldn't kill a bunch of innocent people and then had to watch his own men get blowed up from orbit. That was it. That's Titus' backstory. Uh, fit Dude. Fit Dude decided he was, he, was a, he was a prince of a kingdom that the mother world wanted to control and he had to watch his dad come back dead, and then his mom, his mom Minecraft herself, and then he ran away in fear to protect the bloodline, as he put it, of a kingdom no longer exists. So that's his story. Uh, they, them, chick. I'm calling her they, them, chick because they never say her. I don't even know this chick's name. I don't even know her name. They, them, chick came from a farming world, too, that was turned into a mining colony, and then she was freed by the rebels. Yay! And she wants to fight. That's it. And then Asian chick with the swords apparently also came from a farming village where everybody was killed, but they weren't always peaceful. And she goes and breaks out the cybernetic arms because apparently her arms are cybernetic. I think I mentioned that before. And the only her backstory is I cut off my arms so I can put on the cybernetic arms that taught me how to fight. And I did everything with vengeance in my heart. Yay! And then Cora gets to tell her story of, I just am a soldier. I'm not telling the truth that I killed the princess and helped kill the king because I'm afraid everybody will be angry at me. There's your backstory. 20 minutes of this montage garbage. Of this flashback exposition backstory garbage. These characters are not deep. This is if this is what Zack Snyder considers character development, good lord. Good lord. Never create anything again. Stick to making things explode. 
or making things be weird slow motion because that seems to be what you're good at. That and, I guess, go direct some porn because that's what you're going to have to do now. You said so yourself. Anyway, uh, after they're done with backstories, everybody gets ready for the fight before they, they're getting ready for the fight because during the after this I oh I know I forgot a part I forgot a part I'm sorry I'm trying to get this as quickly as possible at one point during the getting ready for battle montage they went to get Korra's drop ship that was still sitting in the mountains and after they pulled it free guess what it works perfectly they had some bird nests in the engine. Cleared those out. Everything's fine. Now, I want to point this out specifically because when in the last movie, they had to leave the planet and go borrow a uh, dude from uh, Sons of Anarchy's ship. They needed a ship. But apparently, they had a working ship. They had a working ship that clearly is capable of interstellar travel because Korra made it from wherever she was in the last ship to this planet. They left this ship solely here so that it can be used for a plot tool in this movie. It makes no sense. She could have gone to pick up the ship in the last movie. You didn't need to have the whole betrayal arc from dudes from Son of Anarchy in the last movie. You didn't need that. Zack Snyder sucks. While Korra now is doing the last thing she needs to do to get ready for the battle, she needs to hide the ship. And while she's hiding the ship behind a waterfall, here comes Anthony Hopkins' robot to tell her that he's found the will to go on, but that they're going to lose. All set up so that he can predictably show up in their moment of ultimate plight and deliver a killing blow to the, imper to the I want to say Imperial, to the Mother World forces. And then he leaves. Now, as they get do their final getting ready, because here comes the mothership's here. Mothership has arrived. I'm sorry, Dreadnought of the Mother World has arrived. And we have to, of course, have Korra cut off all her hair because that is apparently going to level her up some more. We now get to the moment of truth. Uh, Admiral Francis from Deadpool 1 does a reading of the, of the village. And their awesome censors apparently are able to pick up only people hiding in a building, not everybody hiding underground in shallowly built tunnels right beneath the surface. I now want to call into question something that bugged me throughout this movie. There is no sense to the technology levels of this world, this universe that Zack Snyder has created. None of it is logical. At one moment, you have incredible, weird scientific stuff that can bring people back to life, and then suddenly your sensors can't detect heat maybe two feet below dirt. And then we're going to get to this in a minute, the weapon systems of this dreadnought, which only really has, I think, the giant cannon and maybe one more on the side. Where's the, the, for an advanced super technological galaxy conquering force, their ship weaponry design is crap. We're going to get back to that. Trust me. I'm going to make my point once more talking about the weirdness, the unexplained designs of the technology of this universe. So, Admiral Francis from Deadpool lands his ship. He comes out. His whole goal is to get core. Oh, I'm sorry. His whole plan is to take all the women and children hostage and force everybody to give up and Cora to be his prisoner because that's all he really wants, Cora. Doesn't care about the food anymore. Just wants Cora so he can get his reach around from the regent. They land. Cora and her simp go to meet them up front. And... He offers her the deal. We get a really bad exchange of dialogue between Admiral Francis from Deadpool and Cora with now the, with now her her lesbian haircut. She dis and she's not a lesbian, but she has a lesbian haircut. It, it that, that's a terrible haircut. It's horrible. Come on, dude. <sighs> they have this conversation. He's really proud that he got the scar from the scar giver. He even shows that I got a scar from you. How appropriate that I got a scar. From the scar giver. He actually says that. It's retarded in many, so many ways. They have this conversation. He basically says, if you give up, I'll spare everybody. Stop right here. They have set up an elaborate plan of traps and, and tunnels and this and that and moments to try and halt the advance. And Korra throws it all the way and says, okay, I'll come with you. Instead of launching into the attack, especially because she's key to part of it to, to with the dropship. 
okay? She's ready to throw it all away, believing that Admiral Francis from Deadpool is going to actually hold up his end of the bargain. At the last minute, she's going to say, no, 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 but then the simp holds her back, and he, and he takes, a, takes her gun and fires the alarm bell, and then the battle's on. It, it, I, just, I have to point out again how... This, she's supposed to be the ultimate soldier, the ultimate warrior, and she breaks down and tries to <laughs> throw their plan out the window when it is a solid plan when you look at everything they've set up as the battle progresses. They had a plan, and if executed, it will work to an extent. But she's ready to throw it all away and ruin it, almost ruin all. Battle happens. I'm not going to go through every inch of this battle because it's a lot of slow motion, a lot of crappy dialogue, a lot of crappy choreography, and just terrible. And it goes on for like 30 minutes. These people think they're the first Avengers movie uh, where that was the 45-minute Battle of New York, which is incredible. And this is 30 minutes of trash. Just complete trash. I will point out a couple of the highlights, though. A lot of people are running around with uh, modified melee weapons from farm tools, including Fit Dude. There's a lot of running and shooting without seeking cover. There's a lot of running and shooting and reloading without seeking cover. Uh, Asian chick with two swords and the cybernetic arms has a three-on-one fight where they hide the fact that they didn't bother to actually have her learn choreography or even do choreography through slow motion. It's really bad. It's terrible. Eventually, she will lose and die, leading up to a point where she has her emotional, wordless exchange with the boy who is infatuated with her as though we're supposed to care about this. And they cry for each other. I haven't really talked about it, but there's a lot of crying in this movie from both men and women, but a lot of crying. I'm so excited for all these characters and their crying. The battle rages on. At one point, uh, the they-them from her really bad moment of, how do I put this? Uh, basically holding a gun wrong, using it wrong, uh, basically stupidity all around, not being a very good soldier or warrior or trained pommie. She decides to jump into the battle and start ganking people with a knife from behind and have her moment of glory. Uh, fit dude is just kind of in the thick of it all. Ti General Titus is in the thick of it all, doing random shit. Doesn't really accomplish anything except shooting dudes at ram random. The, the epic moments are saved for everybody but him. A lot of explosions happen. Bombs go off. At one point, we even have uh, alpha male hunter dude from the village go one-on-one -on -one with Admiral Francis from Deadpool, where he just eventually gets ceremoniously killed and thrown out of the shuttlecraft. Throughout all of this, Cora and her simp have gotten to their shuttlecraft, putting on the old left-behind the left gear from the previous contingent of soldiers that were murdered in the first movie. She puts all that on, and they sneak onto the Dreadnought with the clear, obvious desire to blow up the ship. Hey, that's a good plan. I'm not gonna, sh I'm not gonna throw shade at that. That's a good plan, it makes sense. Meanwhile, in the battle though, once the battle against the first wave is over, everybody thinks they've won, but then there's gonna be, here comes another round with the mechs. Cause you saw in the previously when they were descending, a bunch of mechs were a part of this. And now it's time to, pe more people gonna die. Here's the thing, a lot more people seem to die in this village than there are in the actual village. Cause there's a lot of people left over in the end, but more people should be, th th this village has suffered catastrophic losses when it comes to their population from this battle and they don't seem to really address that all right long story short again let's zip through this while cora and the simp are on the are on the dreadnought getting ready to plant explosives on the ground there's going to be a moment of oh my god what do we do fit dude and the the he, the he she they them are going to be all about hey we don't really want to die anymore we want to live but we're, if we're going to die together hey let's let, let's let's have a relationship of all of two days mean something Let's let's stand up and shoot randomly. But of course, it doesn't matter because predictably, here comes Anthony Hopkins' robot to save the day and kill another round of mechs and soldiers for everybody. He's just going to have a badass CGI robot sequence, and that's it. That's done. And then there's going to be more 
troops coming eventually. We'll get back to that. On the Dreadnought, let's get over this real fast. On the Dreadnought, Korra's going to fake sick with the simp. They're going to make their way inside. There's going to be a couple of battle sequences. She's going to plant some bombs on the engine room, which once more makes us question, what the hell is the technology of this universe? It's this giant face whose eyes glow at one point. Look at her, and it's funneling energy. What is what is the technology? What is the energy source? How about world build that, Zach? Please. I'm begging you. She eventually gets caught and goes into a really stupid jump scene. <laughs> I'm jumping and shooting at you in midair. It's retarded. Admiral Francis from Deadpool eventually learns she's on board and decides, oh, I've got what I want. Annihilate the town. Just annihilate the town. We don't care about the Grand. I don't care about my troops. Just blow it up. We now have the giant main gun, the only real weapon this ship seems to have, except for, I think, one more on the, on the, on the rear of the ship. It's now going to turn and fire. Now, here is where I once again want to bring into question the technology level, the technology period of this universe. This is a highly sophisticated interstellar empire, kingdom, whatever you want to call it. They're hand cranking the gun like it's freaking World War II battleship. Hand cranking the gun while looking through sensors to see if it's locked on. What is this? There is no, there, it's as though Zack Snyder didn't put any thought into the logic of how the science, the technology of his universe works. It's as though he just wants to slap together different things and go, look, it's kind of like World War II. Look, it's really advanced, but isn't it cool that it's a little retro that I have to turn cranks on a gun? I, my first thought watching this, how does this work in a space battle when everything is happening quickly and you have to crank the gun to lock on to something? There is as though Zack Snyder didn't really world build and just slapped shit together and thought it looked cool. Well, the gun is about to destroy everything when Korra's bombs blow up, sending everything into chaos on the ship. At this point, her and the simp have encountered Admiral Francis from Deadpool. Admiral Francis from Deadpool shoots the simp in the gut while engaging in a sword fight with Korra. I am completely unengaged and uninterested in this fight because Korra already kicked this guy's ass in the first movie, and it's not as though he's had an upgrade. He's the exact same. So they have this weird fight where they're fighting on the deck of the of the hangar as every as the ship is falling. So they're falling and sliding around, sword fighting without choreography. They're just swinging light sticks around. Eventually. Admiral Francis from Deadpool gets Korra in a chokehold, and she's going to die because he's, she has no special augmentation. We've seen this. All she has is her training. She's not anything but her training. So, and he's augmented. He's, he's got cybernetic shit all over him. So he's choking her out, and here's a one bright moment. I'll give it this. The simp saves her. He stabs Admiral Francis through the back, finally killing him, or almost killing him, because then he has to... He can't have that kill, though, because now Korra has to have the kill. They kick him off, and eventually she cuts his head off after she traps him in a door. There, done. Now she has to take the simp who's dying back down to the plant. They escape on the ship. The victory is won, except almost where there's one more contingent of mechs and troopers. They have the troops on the ground. The villagers and our heroes have nothing left. Remember, uh, Asian lady's dead. Uh, and a bunch of Most of the population of the town is dead, too. But then guess what happens? Yes, they've still got... Anthony Hopkins robot, but he's apparently not going to be enough because here comes the rebel. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thinking back to it. The simp is dying in Cora's arms. And as he's dying, she looks and says, look, the rebel fleet has come to save us. And it's just a bunch of snub fighters. It's just a bunch of shitty fighters that again, look like there's something out of world war two. And they blow up the remaining fighters from the dreadnought and the ground forces and victory is won. Everyone's going, yeah, yeah, they're cheering. It's over. We lived. It's great. And that's kind of it. We get one more scene where it's the funeral pyres, everybody that died, because this is a this is sort of a a um, a Viking sort of society, 
where they're gonna where they're gonna do funeral pyre. So they do that. Fine, great. And then Cora admits, I'm I'm the scar giver. And Titus goes, Yeah, I know. I knew the whole time. It doesn't matter. You're still you. <sighs> and then he drops the bomb that the princess is alive. As I said, it was obvious she was alive. We knew that was gonna happen. And now you have a purpose to keep to go keep fighting, Cora. You can keep fighting because now you need to go protect the princess. And then Anthony Hopkins Joy says, "The princess is alive. I'm ready to fight." Fit Dude says, "I'm ready to fight." Uh, Rebels, uh, Resistance Chick says, "We're with you too." Titus says, "I'm with you." Guess what? We're all with you. Yay! Movie over. That's it. That's it. It's done. It just got to end right there. There's no stingers, no nothing. Now, of course, we have, we get to look forward to the Zack Snyder cut. The Snyder cut of Rebel Moon Part 1 and 2. That means probably a whole six to nine hours of this horseshit. I am watching that. You, you, you assholes do not get to make me watch this. I am done. And this, Zack Snyder thinks he's going to do another four or six movies? He thinks he's going to get kind of that. That ain't happening, bud. Dude, you ain't getting that shit. You know why? Because as you said before this movie dropped last week, if this doesn't work, you're going to have to direct porn. Well, guess what, Zacky boy? Go get, you're going to be making porn. You're making porn, dude, because this, this movie was hot garbage. Uh, I've kind of said all I wanted to say as we went through it. The dialogue... You'd have to actually watch it to really hear how bad it is. I didn't want to do clips today because I just want to get through this. I want to get through this horrible, horrible thing. I just want to be done with it. It's a movie made by a man who has no idea what creativity truly is. Zack Snyder doesn't understand how to make a character, doesn't understand how to give true backstories, doesn't understand how to deliver a movie, a world with substance. There is no substance. It's just people talking about stuff and saying, well, there you go. Here it, here's what happened. Are you, are you listening to me? And then followed up by a lot of slow goddamn motion hiding the lack and bad choreography. This is a, dis, dis, it's a terrible movie. It's just bad from every aspect there's nothing redeeming about this now if you like it good for you you can go enjoy it just admit it's a bad movie that's all i'm asking there's nothing redeeming about it anyway i think i've said my piece i'm done thank you for watching this review if you enjoyed it hit that like button we'd much appreciate it and if you are new here i invite you to subscribe to me right here on youtube or hope to earn your trust support using facts and logic because facts and logic do not care about whiny fake fans stan and hw fifis thank you again for watching take it easy thanks for watching everyone if you enjoyed the video hit that like button subscribe to the channel check out my gaming channel at renaissance nerd arcade and follow me on x twitter under at the red nerd Thanks again for watching. Take it easy.